two Super Bowl victories, two Super Bowl MVPs. He's in the top 10 in every category. I mean, there's not a lot of guys that can stay as durable as he did over the years. I mean, all of those things take into account when you look at Hall of Fame and look at the resume that he's, uh, that he's developed for himself. So I think it's just a matter of time. Want to start off with this first? Though. You have partnered with Captain Morgan Original Spice Rum to help find the NFL Fan of the Year for the 2022 season. Now, you did this last year, but what can you tell us about this league-wide contest? Well, it's incredible, actually. It's really the, the true display of fandom, right? To see exactly where these fans come from, exactly why they, why they fight so hard for their fan base and for their team and what they do and the lengths that they'll go uh, for their team. So we just want to give back to that. And Captain Morgan is doing a tremendous job with that and uh, partnering with the NFL. And all 32 teams are going to pick one lucky fan to represent their club at, the Super, at Super Bowl 57. And not only that, the fans will be able to choose who that fan of the year is through nomination and through fan voting and things like that. So it's not just a bunch of jurors picking some people. It's actually the fans picking who the fan of the year is going to be. So between Captain Morgan and the NFL, they're running that initiative, and and it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it's a cool concept because I remember watching, um, it's right before the Super Bowl last year, uh, Atlanta Falcons fan when the NFL fan of the year. So uh, me being from Atlanta, so that was really uh, cool to see. So, um, but Obviously, with you, you played your entire career with the Giants. You know about how the Giants fans are just so passionate. But what would you say are the best thing about New York New York Giants fans? Um, I, for me, is that they're real. I, I mean, yeah. there's no sugarcoating anything. They're going to tell you exactly how they feel. But when they, but when you're in their good graces, when you're playing good, when you're winning games, and you're a good citizen in the community, uh, they pay you back, uh, and it go and it goes back tenfold. But but man, you better be doing some winning in this town because it could get scary out there. That, that's for sure. I've seen it. I've been <laughs> on both sides of the coin. Trust me. Yeah, you definitely have. And um, you were talking about the good side of things. Uh, last year, you and some of your teammates from the 2011 team uh, got back together together and celebrated uh, that Super Bowl win you had uh, in 2011. So what was it like uh, reuniting with some of your teammates and just looking back on that memorable season? It was incredible just to see those guys again and just to think that, like, you know, 10 years have passed since that Super Bowl. It just feels like it's something's wrong. The math isn't adding up there. Um, but it was it, it was just incredible to see all those teammates again and relive those memories and go through those stories and banter with each other and, you know, just have those moments again because you miss those guys. And you don't really realize how much you miss them until they're all back in the room again and you – you're reminded on on the fellowship and the relationships that you've had with some of these guys over the years. And it's second to none, you know what I mean? So uh, I was happy I got to do that again with those guys. You kind of see it, you know, as a player in my earlier years, you would see the 10-year reunion and things like that and see guys come out and you'd be like, man, I hope that's me one day. And then to actually do that uh, was, was pretty cool. Absolutely. And during that season, you had a memorable year. You caught uh, 82 passes for 1,500 yards. So what was the biggest key to your success that season? I think it was just a being, you know, so young that I didn't even know what I was doing. Like just, I'm just out there just playing carefree and, you know, paying attention to detail and just letting the game come to me. And, um, and, and I just think there was a level of focus that not only my teammates and still, but the coaching staff, my family, like there was just this bubble around me of, of positivity and making sure everything was smooth, that it allowed me to just be free and play football and be excited about what was to come and being out there. Yeah, and you and Eli Manning worked well together, not just that season, but throughout your career. And Eli ended up winning two Super Bowls, uh, ranked in the top 10 when it comes to passing yards and touchdowns. So he has put together a Hall of Fame resume. So what, where would you rank Eli among the best quarterbacks in NFL history? I mean, he's in the conversation. I, I think he's, uh, you know, without putting a number on it, because, you yeah. know, we could be here forever. But <laughs> I think he deserves to be in that conversation. He has two Super Bowl victories, two Super Bowl MVPs. He's in the top 10 in every category. I mean, there's not a lot of guys that can stay as durable as he did over the years. I mean, all of those things take into account when you look at Hall of Fame and look at the resume that he's, uh, that he's developed for himself. So I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, before he gets in, but I think uh, I think he definitely ranks in that top tier of quarterback, in my opinion. 
do you still keep in contact with Eli? I know he's been busy with a ton of projects, but you still uh, keep in contact with him? Yeah, for sure, man. He still makes time for the small people like us every <laughs> now and again. You know, he still takes the time to pick up the phone and call us. He actually owes me a golf date, so we'll see oh. if we can get that on the books at some point in time. Yeah, you got to get that. You got to get that done, definitely. <laughs> uh, but but when you look at this year's uh, New York Giants squad, um, they're a team kind of going through transition. They have a new head coach and Brian Dayball, um, and they look to uh, get back into the playoff picture. So what do you think is the biggest thing for them to, in order for them to not only make it to the postseason, but possibly make a run to the Super Bowl? Well, I think two things is one, they have to figure out who they are. I think they're still figuring out their identity and what this team's going to be. I think they're all to a good start in the preseason. I think they've shown some some positive changes, at least from a year ago. But they have to figure out their identity and figure out who they're going to be and who they are as a football team and then go out there and perform. And that takes time. It's going to take, you know, might take the first month of the season. It might take some time to really figure that out and get through that. But they got to figure that out. And then And then it comes down to just – Playmakers have to make plays. You know, Daniel Jones has to flat out make plays. Saquon Barkley has to make plays. That receiving core has to make plays. So it just comes down to guys understanding their roles and, and making those big plays when their numbers call. You mentioned Daniel Jones making plays. One of the biggest things that he has to do this season. He's entering his fourth year in the NFL. He's shown glimpses of what he can do. But in order for them, in order for the Giants to be successful, Daniel Jones does have to take his game to the next level. So do you think he has that ability to take that next step and be that franchise quarterback? I think he does. I think he's shown it in flashes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think he's, uh, he, he's shown time periods and flashes throughout certain drives and series where he can be that franchise guy, where he can deliver the ball downfield, make plays, get his team into the end zone. I think he can do that. I, I think the biggest thing for him is just being consistent in that regard. I think it's being more decisive when he throws the football and just being consistent with his decision making. And I think that'll really go a long way for him. And those are the kind of things you saw already in the preseason, him getting the ball out, going through his reads efficiently and, and, and doing what he needs to do to get the ball downfield. And, and, it's, and it paid off early in that preseason. Year. The last question for me before I I'll let you go is um, obviously you have uh, the Captain Morgan NFL Fan of the Year contest going on. What, what other projects do you have coming up that you can talk about? Oh, man, I have a, uh, a chain of Crystal's uh, burger shops coming, uh, uh, Crystal's Burgers that are coming to, north, to the Northeast New Jersey area for the first time, hopefully breaking ground top of the year. Um, so that's happening. Um, I got a couple other partnerships in the works that I can't really disclose just yet. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but also Captain Morgan is uh, a tremendous sponsor. It absolutely is. I'm looking forward to see who wins uh, NFL Fan of the Year. It should be an exciting season. Looking forward to the season as well. Victor, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Congratulations on everything and continued success to you. Thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate it. <laughs>